When the tea is hot, you found the right spot. So whether you're ready or not, you are sipping tea with the VP. I'm Linnea Bowden, your host, in for Dr. Valerie Fields, Vice President for Student Affairs at the University of Louisiana at Monroe. It's about that time, y'all. It's about that time because it's final season, and y'all know we're typically chugging coffee and energy drinks for breakfast. Where all nighter naps are probably the only form of sleep we can afford, and the study guides aren't guiding anything. Listen, if you can relate to this, we need to talk, and you're in the right place. Today, we'll be unpacking study tips, burnout, and mentality so that we all can stay sane, but more importantly, so that you can have the pep talk you need to end the semester encouraged and confident. First, Let's kick off this conversation by addressing the elephant in the room, studying, with one of our students, Alasia Jackson. Alasia has had her fair share of college involvement, so I believe she understands that prioritizing her studies is key. Welcome, Alasia. As I recall, you were an attendee at the panel. Can you tell us a bit why you decided to come to the panel and how you can relate to the challenges of studying? Yes, I actually was an attendee at the panel, so I decided to attend the panel simply because I'm a busy college student. Mm -hmm. Anyone can relate to that. I'm in about six organizations. Mm -hmm. I like to have fun with my friends. I still want to spend time with my parents, and I still want to relax. We all need some time to relax. So I really came to the panel to hear about y'all's study tips and how not to burn out. I understand. I understand, I understand. See, I believe that many students can relate to you. In fact, at the panel, we asked them, like, what are some study habits that they struggle with? And some of the main ones that came up was procrastination and not focusing. So nobody is alone in this. Can you recall any of the study tips we had discussed in the panel? Yes, so what really stood out to me with the studies, mm-hmm. y'all said that we should do chunking, which is breaking it, up, breaking it up instead of tackling it all at once. So for me, that's simply setting timers, a 45-minute timer and a 15-minute timer. So for my 45-minute timer, I'm sitting there and I'm studying and I'm making sure I know everything. And for my 15 minutes, I'm going and I'm relaxing, whether that's getting on TikTok or watching YouTube or even washing clothes so I can do two things at once. I believe that's very good. And that time period that you have set aside strictly for studying gives you time to be focused and also time to do whatever you need to do. So I love that. Also, that kind of goes into knowing what's best for you. Some people might need different timers, but we also talked about different ways to know what's best for you. Can you expound on that a little bit? Okay. Finding what's best for you is simply like identifying yourself as a person first. So if you know that you are a procrastinator, maybe it's like setting aside a calendar and each day you're studying certain things on certain days, whether it's like science on Monday and Tuesday it's statistics or something like that. Or if you know that you easily get distracted, it's getting a study room and going to the library so you can be by yourself. You're not surrounded by noise or anything that can distract you and putting your phone on do not disturb. That's interesting. I believe Estrella Hernandez, one of our panelists, actually touched on this. And one of the things that she said, knowing what best for her, was setting an agenda, a time management tool, so that she knows what days she has other things and what days she doesn't. Through that schedule, was able to figure out what worked best for her. And then you said studying alone, studying together. Some people study differently, and that is okay. And I think it's really important for us not to compare to each other. All right. We also talked about self-awareness, and I believe you touched a bit on that, about knowing yourself as a person. Why is that important to success? Exactly. That's definitely important to success because if you're sitting here and you're comparing yourself to everyone around you, you're Mm -hmm. just tearing yourself down. If I'm looking at my best friend who's like straight A, 4.0, can study in any environment, like I know I'm not like that, so I have to think about myself and think about what it takes for me to study and what's actually possible because I've never been a 4.0 student and that's okay. We're going to get that degree. Amen. Yes, (laughs) ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Alasia, thank you so much for your voice and being here as our guest today. I definitely agree with Alasia. I believe that self-awareness is important because if you know who you are, where you're at, and what you need, you'll be more likely to prevent burnout. The definition of burnout is a state of emotional, physical, and mental exhaustion caused by excessive and prolonged stress. I'd like to invite Elena Elena Armstead to unpack this topic about burnout with me. Welcome, Elena. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me. Awesome. See, Elena isn't new to this college life. Aside from holding multiple positions of leadership, she is also a working woman. Elena, can you tell us a bit more about your experiences with burnout as a student and what stuck with you in the panel? 
Okay. With me being a full-time student and a part-time worker on campus, I have been going through burnout since I've been a freshman here at this university. I just realized what burnout was when I became a junior, which was this past semester. Some ways that I knew that I was getting burnt out of what when I was doing is me losing sleep and not getting up to eat, not being able to focus in certain classes and certain courses to make sure I am fulfilling my life academically. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you for sharing your experience so vulnerably with us. Let's get into how we can prevent this. Time management was a common theme mentioned in the panel. Can you share some practical tips you learned? Yes. So with time management, I believe that is very important for all, for everybody, even most importantly, college students, because we have so much going on in our lives, and then anything can happen quick of a blink. And for you to overcome burnout and to overcome your stress levels, this, a way for you to prevent that is to time management. And time management, I say, get you a planner, one that you can write in, one that you can see visually on your laptop or your iPad or whatever technology you have that you use for college, I will most definitely look into that. And also ask yourself to make sure, are you ready for this, for this process? Are you ready to take this course? Are you mentally stable to do this organization at this time? Like time management plays a big part of college and nobody really realizes that and people realize it's too late. Yes, yes, I agree. With time management coming up, I will always hear people tell me that I needed to manage my time and not know what to do about it. And so if you're like me and you have felt that way, I definitely believe we appreciate those tips that you gave. Another thing that we talked about was being realistic. Do you ever find yourself doing more than what you can handle? And how can students be more realistic with their expectations? Yes, I do find myself doing a lot more than I can handle. Even with me being a full-time college student, once again, and a student worker on campus, it is a lot. And I just started to realize what am I capable to do this past, this semester. Like, I just know, I just found out my exact limits of what I can do each day and what time of each day. So some ways that you can be realistic yourself is to ask yourself, can I do this? Can I put all my time into this organization or into this specific specific course or this assignment that I have to do? Am I able to get this done in a timely manner? Am I going to have a positive attitude during this? Am I going to be okay if I take some time in my day to do this organization? Just, I just say, ask yourself, And me personally, I'm a big fan of talking to myself. I know people say that's crazy, but (laughs) I personally do that. If you see me walking down Warhawk Way, I'm talking to myself half of the time I am. Just be sure that you're 110% into this, what you want to do to prevent burnout and to prevent stress. I recommend that for everybody. Thank you. And thank you for giving that disclaimer about the way you talk to yourself, because I 110 percent agree with that as someone who's been caught multiple times. Okay. (laughs) Also, I saw you I heard you talking a lot about self-awareness, knowing what's going on. And at the panel, we had a counselor. Her name was Crystal Ward. And she said it's very important to know why you feel the way you feel and what caused your burnout. And I could see that in a lot of questions that you were encouraging all of us to ask. And so. My next and final question would be, what are some good habits for self-care and self-awareness that we can use during final season? Okay, some good self-awareness and some good habits you can use is my biggest one. When when you're studying for an exam, I do the 30-20 method. So you study this material for 30 minutes, or you can then you take a break for 20 to 10 to 20 minutes off that subject to give your brain a break because once you overload yourself with so much information you're not going to remember it I learned that the hard way (laughs) also take a time out of the day to just spend time with yourself you have to my most important thing is you have to know your body and know your limits because when you overwork yourself you're not going to give your 110% into that 
specific assignment or test at that time. I just say take time to yourself. Be more responsible with your eating habits and your sleeping habits. If you're studying at 9 o'clock in the morning, I say finish studying around 2 o'clock. You should be done wrapping it up. The rest of the day should be to yourself. To give your mental awareness a time to just rest, just to have a time to just sit down and, whew, I can actually enjoy the rest of my day and not pack yourself down with so much information and think you're going to remember it. I just believe that you should and 100% should take a time out for you specifically just to make sure you're okay before you do anything else that can trigger your mental awareness and your self-awareness. Exactly, exactly, I agree. And I believe that some college students probably listening to this right now are like, oh my <laughs> goodness, because it's going against everything that we try to do because there's this pressure and society to keep to do more, especially in this Western world. And so it is a great reminder with the study breaks and just in general to sit back, take care of yourself, take care of your body. And so I appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Elena. One of our panelists, David Hernandez, shared his journey of finding his passion. As someone who transitioned from pre-med to biochemistry, he was actually encouraging us students to pursue our passions in school. I believe it would be very difficult as he agreed to do something and be passionate about it if you actually don't want to do it. And so I believe that your passions will serve as a natural motivator. In fact, I'd like to expound on motivation and mentality. And I'm going to invite my friend, Treasure Garner, to dive into this with me. Welcome, Treasure. Wow, thank you so much, so much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. I feel like we can learn more about you and your answer to this question. When I say motivation and mentality, what comes to mind and why is it important to you? So motivation to me, it is the purpose. It is the why. So basically you think about the destination. So motivation is you thinking about the destination to get you through those things that stands in the way of your destination. Mentality. Mentality is basically your perspective. Mentality is the reason why you have to maneuver through the unrealistic things that may be in front of you. So basically meaning that that you have to be able to change your perspective when things get tough. And this is so important to me because, for one, I am a pre-pharmacy major with a minor in business as well as a minor in Spanish, so things can get a little unrealistic sometimes. Yes. And you just have to be able to change your perspective because it can't be done. Do you have any tips for that, for students to change their mentality and perspective? Really, just going back to what I just said, basically understanding your why. When you understand your why, then you can push through anything. It's so it's the idea of the examples that we have in today's society, looking at the different leaders on this campus as well as the leaders that are in the world today. Yes, ma'am. As I can recall, knowing your why, which is your reasoning for being here at this campus in your major, at your class, that is important. It was a key note and point in our panel. What is your why? Basically, my why is to be better, be better in an environmental idea and be better in a mental capacity, meaning just being better in those things that my parents couldn't give to me. So basically increasing my knowledge. Right. So I want to be great in life. So for me personally, that is the foundation would be college. Right. That's the reason why I'm here. So when I get this foundation of college and the knowledge that I need to be able to succeed in the real world, then I can succeed in those things that I wish that I can conquer. That is great. That is great. We appreciate it. With knowing your why, I believe there can be a disconnect between your why and what you're doing at the present moment. How do you remember your why and how do you advise for other students to remember why and their purpose for being here? Sometimes it can be misconstrued, but you have to understand that your why is where you're trying to go, right? It's where you're trying to 
level out and to succeed in so sometimes like when you think that you're just going through the motions in the moment like right now when you're studying through the motions when you are just thinking about all the stress and everything is that can be categorized as in the motion right so when you think about those things you have to remember I'm not here just to turn in an assignment. I'm not here just to take a test. These exams, these quizzes are to catapult me into my future. They are the reason on why I'm here, the foundation block, which is college. This is what this is an obstacle that you have to go over in order to succeed in whatever your why is. Yes. Knowing your why is crucial to staying grounded. It's crucial to staying grounded here at ULM and This was a key point in our conversation. What keeps you grounded? As I recall, Madison Rideau, one of our panelists, she said that praying is something that keeps her grounded when she's overwhelmed and she does not know what to do or how to handle it. How do you stay grounded and how do you recommend other students stay grounded? I would say for me personally, I am spiritual. So I do attend church and I do pray a lot. But for those people who may not, that may not be their avenue, a suggestion would be, again, to remember your why, but have a physical why. Basically, for an example, I do a vision board, create a vision board so that you can constantly see what you're looking at, what you're striving to. The people that you hang around, maybe there are people that are already there. Maybe there are people that are in your major. Um, Again, staying grounded, meaning that you are constantly talking with people who are going in the same place as you. So you will not feel alone. That's staying grounded, staying rooted into continuing to strive in that area. I have one final question for you, Treasure. How important is self-awareness and perspective and mentality? I know that we touched on it a bit, but how would you advise students to create a motivated space? Self-awareness is very crucial. Self-awareness, you have to have self-awareness to in order to be realistic, right? But you have to have perspective. You have to be able to change your perspective in order to do those things that are unrealistic to you. And I think that in order to have that type of motivated space, you have to know the people that you are around. Going back to the previous, my previous answer, the people that you are around is very crucial. Those are the people, the, what is the saying? The saying is birds of a feather flock together. Um, so the, that may be a silly statement, but it is very valid in the scenario. And a lot of people think that that's not the case. But the people that you are around, the things that you consume with your brain, with your mind, the things that you even consume subconsciously, television, phone, things like that, those are the things that feed into the self-awareness, the perspective the whole motivational space that all plays a factor so when you are looking into those avenues that are positive you know for specific to your major specific to your success your goals your dreams then all that will smooth out then you will be motivated personally for yourself thank you so much treasure we appreciate you for your words thank you for sharing your thoughts and being here today yes thank you so much i'm glad to be here And we also would like to thank all of you. As the Sip and Tea Committee, we understand that you could have tuned into any other place, but you chose us, and we do not take that for granted. But we're also curious to know, what challenged you in this conversation? And what are you going to do about it? With the information we've given you, I believe that you have the ability to shift your atmosphere going into finals. Yes, it's a time that we are stressed and we are struggling and we're trying to get these things done, but it's up to you because we have come together and we've wanted to present a resource to you and you can choose to change your space, your perspective, your mentality. And therefore, I just would like to end that with saying final season is just a season, meaning it's going to pass. And so I want to let you know that you are called right here, right now. You're called to that class and to that major. And so you will finish well, even if it was a rough semester for you. Your mentality can carry you through. I'd like to thank Dr. Fields and Misen Fontaine for helping to produce this episode. And I'd also like to thank KEDM Public Radio at ULM. I'm Linnea Bowden. I'm honored to be your host for today's episode. And I just want to let y'all know it's about that time. It's final season and it's about that time because all of us are going to ace these finals.